Alrighty, we're moving right along with this unit. Chapter 3 is all about linear functions, so we'll extend all the equations that we learned how to solve in Chapter 2 and apply them to linear functions and equations. First section, 3.1, graphing linear equations. So this is a funny title, it's called graphing linear equations, but it's a lot more actually about using standard form uh, of a line. So I'll talk about both graphing and using standard form. So the first definition or vocab word is a, what is a linear equation? Pretty straightforward based on the title. It's any equation that, when you graph it, forms a straight line. So the graph will be drawn by a ruler, or, uh, well, oftentimes we'll draw them by hand, but it will make a straight line when you graph it. Now there's uh, three different forms that a linear equation could be in, and we'll learn all three. But to start off with, here's the first one, standard form. So standard form of a straight line. The definition is kind of, you can't really say it in words. It's one of the three possible forms, but really your definition is the equation, okay? So um, the three different forms of a line will be defined by their equation. So ax plus by equals c is the equation for standard form. Now the numbers, or the letter a, b, and c, they stand for numbers, so they're not variables. They are representing numbers, and more importantly they have to be integers, which means they can't be fractions and they cannot be decimals. Also, the first one here, the leading coefficient it's called, the leading coefficient a has to be positive. And lastly, we put the ax and the by, or variable terms, on the left, and we put the single number by itself on the right. So those are kind of the three rules uh, for what you have to do to have an equation be in standard form. Um, we'll do some examples of converting into standard form so you can see uh, in action how to get these three things to happen. Okay. Two more vocab words. These are ones we talked about before. Intercepts. The x-intercept is where on the graph you cross the x-axis. And to find where you cross the x-axis, the y value is zero. Uh, let me draw a picture here so we can kind of illustrate this. So su suppose this right here is our straight line. Actually, let me choose a different color real quick. Suppose this blue line is our, is our function that we're graphing. Where you cross the x-axis, this is the x-axis, of course, the horizontal axis. The place where we cross it right here, we have a y value of 0. We're not above and we're not below. So when the y value is 0, that's on the axis. You'll find your x-intercept. And likewise, the y-intercept, so this is the y-intercept, that's where the x-value is 0. We're on the y-axis because we haven't moved left or right, and of course this one was the x, that looks like, x-intercept. Okay, so x and y-intercept are where you cross the axis, and the way in which you can find them mathematically with an equation is by setting the y-value to zero to get the x-intercept, and setting the x-value to zero to get the y-intercept. Alright, problem-solving tips. To convert to standard form, uh, notice one of the rules, if you recall, was that you couldn't have any fractions or decimals. So the first thing you want to do is multiply by whatever is in the denominator. And if you have a decimal, um, convert it to a fraction and do this, or multiply by whatever it takes to make it a whole number. So you got to clear out those fractions and decimals first. And then you can rearrange uh, to do the rest of it. Uh, the next kind of hint is for finding intercepts. I had just said this in the previous slide, but the way that you can find intercepts is by plugging in a zero for the other variable. So to find the x-intercept, you set y to zero. To find the y-intercept, you set x to zero. All right, let's do some examples. Identifying linear equations. So for these, you have to say whether or not the equation is a linear equation. So let me make some examples. 2x minus y equals 5. So according to our our formula. Let me rewrite it here. Standard form says ax plus by equals c. Notice some properties. x is to the first power, and y is to the first power, and the x and y terms are added together, or they could be subtracted because b might be negative. So this equation here, well that's a minus sign, that is yes. That is a linear equation. a is positive 2, b is negative 1, even though the 1 is not drawn there, and c is 5. What if we have x, y plus 2 equals 5? Now the 2, we could move to the other side by doing minus 2, minus 2. So x, y equals 3. 
So the 2 there is not a problem because it could be moved over here. So C would be 3. But here the two terms are supposed to be added or subtracted, and here they are multiplied. So this is no, not a linear equation. So when you're trying to identify whether something is a linear equation or not, both the x and y terms have to be to the first power, and the two x and y terms have to be in the numerator, added or subtracted together. Um, if they're on the wrong side, it's still a linear equation, it's just not in standard form, because you could move them over to the other side and put it in standard form. Okay, a couple of examples now. Let's convert to standard form. So the rule was, let me write it again, one more time, drill this home, ax plus by equals c. We need no fractions or decimals. Well, we already have that condition met. We need the x and y terms on the left-hand side. So with this, this 2x needs to be on the other side. So we'll subtract 2x. So now we have minus 2x plus y equals 4, okay? But the leading term a is supposed to be positive. So this is supposed to be positive. Now you don't want to add 2x because that will just move it right back to their side. To make the leading term positive, we can multiply everything by negative 1 and distribute it in. That changes the sign of all the terms. So negative times negative becomes positive 2x, but this becomes negative y. And you have to remember to do it to the other side as well. Negative 4. So here's our standard form. a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 4. Okay, likewise, now we have this. We want to <coughs> clear the fraction. Even before we distribute it in, we want to clear the fraction. So we can multiply the entire equation by the denominator. The denominator is a 3, so we multiply the entire equation by 3. Now we distribute it in here. Now, because this is a product, something times something, we're only distributing in once to this entire thing. This is all one term because it's a product, okay? Very, very important. So 3 times 3y is 9y. Here we have x plus 6. Now 3 times 3 halves, the 3's cancel. That was the whole point, right? So we have a 2 here. Now we can distribute the 2 in. 2x plus 12 equals 9y. So I've got my x's on the left-hand side. I need to get my y's on the left-hand side, so minus 9y minus 9y. And then I also need to move this 12, it's a positive 12, yeah, over to the other side. So I have 2x. Can I do this without showing anything? Minus 9y equals, let's see how clever we can be. There's a positive 12 here. If I minus 12 on minus 12, there it is, minus 12. So here's the equation in standard form. a is 2, b is negative 9, c is negative 12. Note this tricky step. Let me kind of elucidate this one real quick. We had a 3 times a 2 thirds times an x plus 6. We have three different things being multiplied together. We can do them in any order. We could distribute these in first. We could even distribute the 3 in. But ultimately, the easiest thing is to do these two first, cancel the 3's, and then distribute the 2, right? So make sure that you're remembering that you can do multiplication in any order if you have three or more things. And furthermore, you want to pick the order that makes it easiest as possible. All right, last example, here we go. Find the intercepts, x and y, and use those to graph it, okay? So to find the x and y intercepts, to find the x intercept, I set y equal to zero. So in this equation, if I set y equal to zero, I have two x minus zero equals 9. That's nothing, right? So just divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 4.5. So that's my x-intercept. To get the y-intercept, pretty easy, set x equal to 0. So I can now have 0 minus 3y equals 9. Well, that's nothing, yeah? So divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and we get y equals negative <coughs> 9 divided by negative 3, is negative 3. Now, to graph this, using those intercepts, it's easier than you might think. The y-intercept is negative 3, so on the y-axis we go down 3. And the x-intercept is 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there's 5. Let me change color for the graph. 
So the x-intercept is here, the y-intercept is here, and it's a straight line. We know this is a linear equation, so you only need two points to draw a straight line. So you draw a straight line, and hopefully yours is a little more straight than mine, but the graph looks essentially a straight line like that because we've got our two intercepts. So if you have an equation in standard form, finding these x and y intercepts and then using them to graph is a very good way to do a graph. Uh, that's it for now. In this section, remember that you learned to convert to standard form and to graph and find intercepts, or use the intercepts to make a graph. That's it for now.